The photographer Richard Young has played a significant part in mapping the celebrity culture of Britain and the United States over nearly 50 years. He's had an interesting career capturing images of the world's icons from Fe Freddie Mercury to Serge Gainsbourg and Marvin Gaye to Madonna. For his very first job, he gate-crashed Richard Burton's 50th birthday party at the Dorchester Hotel in London in 1975, from which he was eventually thrown out by Liz Taylor. He later became friends with Liz Taylor, who allowed him to photograph her whenever she was in London. To hear his story, I'm joined now in the studio by Richard Young, and you've even brought a camera with you. Yeah, my good old faithful Leica is with me. Really? Uh, how, how old and faithful is that? Is that what you're saying? Well, this one is um, pretty n new. It's called a Q2. Um, they've been on the market for about a couple of years now, Q1, Q2s. And, and only in the last week, they brought out the new Q3, which I'm hoping that maybe one day <laughs> I'll be able to afford to buy. When did you um, first sell a photograph for a decent amount of money? Um, it was 1974. It was of, um, I was, I was with some friends who introduced me to a young chap called Paul Getty Jr. And he just had been released by the mafia in Italy and he was minus one ear. And we all went out for lunch to the Hard Rock Cafe and uh, we we're walking through Hyde Park and I took some pictures of him. I was still in my learning period of how to use a camera and we sold the pictures with his permission to um, the Evening Standard and that was the beginning. And the Evening Standard would then call me maybe two or three times a week and send me on, you know, small assignments, which was, which was very fruitful. But for that, even for the, um, the world exclusive of, on Paul Getty, which everybody was searching for him, um, they gave me £30. To me, at that time, that was a lot of money. <laughs> you, you were obviously um, very bold. I've just told half the story of you gate-crashing the um, Richard Burton's 50th birthday party. Um, tell me about that. How did you actually gate crash it? Were you disguised or what? No, I wasn't disguised. Um, and strangely enough, um, I was wearing a suit for a change, um, which I think helped the, the situation. And um, I had the corduroy suits on. I was at the Dorchester Hotel being told by the publicists at the Dorchester Hotel. Um, would, and there was three other photographers there, but they were all star photographers. And they really basically wanted to go home. Uh, would you mind leaving? So they left and I just wandered off because I just wandered off. I saw this young assistant of the PR going through some glass doors and, and I've always been told if you see a door, go through it because they can only turn you back. And I went, I went through these glass doors and eventually I ended up in this um, ballroom, which was um, pretty empty at the time. And the only person there at the time was um, the DJ. And I went up to him, I told him I gate crashed and he said, well, put your camera down and, and this is how the record play, this is how it all works. So now I become the, the assistant DJ. But I knew then, don't take any pictures when they come in or anything. Wait until you see the birthday cake with 50 candles on it, because obviously that is the picture to be taken, which is what I did. And um, I took some pictures when it did arrive. And, um, and Elizabeth Taylor came over to me because she saw my flash. She could see it was much more bigger than all her guests, all the guests' flash. So, and um, what happened was she said to me, would I mind leaving? She wasn't very happy, but her nose nearly touched my nose when she was telling me this. <laughs> and the secret was, don't say a word, let's turn and walk. So I did. And of course, about a week later or two weeks later, I got a phone call again from the Dorchester saying um, and how naughty I was and everything else. And would I mind terribly, I knew this was coming, can we have some prints so we can sell, send them to Miss Taylor in Los Angeles? And of course, I rushed out, made up about half a dozen prints, took them to the Dorchester, and they sent them on to Miss Taylor. About a year later, she, I saw her in London, and she said to me, you were very, very, very naughty, but thank you for sending the photograph. Because they were so good. Let's they were so good, and we got quite friendly. And she apod and she um, she forgave me and everything. And and I, in, in actual fact, became very good friends with her. Up until until the year two, year two thousand, I was doing various things with her. In the year two thousand, her attorney called me um, from Los Angeles and asked me if I was in London that for the next week. I said, yes. Well, Miss Taylor's coming to London. She wants you to be her official photographer to come to the Dorchester for the official lunch with her close family, taking pictures because she was just be receiving, uh, she was becoming a dame by the Queen. And, um, and would I do all the pictures? And I did. Tell me about your philosophy of photographing celebrities. 
Because, I mean, often, I mean, obviously, as you became more famous, you weren't gate-crashing parties. You no. Were, you were taking your time. <clears throat> you were getting them relaxed. You were trying to see them in their most natural behaviour, most natural environment. Tell me about how you would approach a celebrity. Um, first of all, m three things. Have a sense of humour, mm. all right? Always have a smile on your face. Always be polite and just be kind. Just don't, don't hound them. Don't get too close to them in the sense of never let them become too friendly with you or you become too friendly with them because you're, then you're crossing a certain line and everything else and it becomes a little bit more personal. Um, just, just be a nice guy. There's a lot of wise guys out there doing the job who are making a real kind of hash of it, right? But I, I've learned that um, if you're nice to everybody and polite to everybody using the, the, the two very big words in my life, please and thank you, it gets you everywhere. Tell me about the changing nature of celebrity because I, I get the idea that you very much admired the people you were photographing at first, but now there are people around you don't, you don't even know why they're famous. I, I, well, most of the time, I don't know who anybody is. <laughs> uh, I, I well, nowadays? Well, pardon? Nowadays. Nowadays. Uh, yes. but, but I took my daughter with me. Um, I took my daughter with me to the Oscars this year. We had the most fabulous time. We were shooting the Versace fashion show and party um, in West Hollywood. And we're walking around, and I promise you, I didn't know who anybody was, right? But I'm so happy I took her with me because she pointed everybody out to me, all these rap stars, all these other uh, celebrities who she knew because it was her culture and it was her age group, right? And I'm going, who are these people? She said, D Dad, don't worry, just photograph them. And I did, and it made it the most incredible evening ever. I mean, it was one, funny at one point she said to me, go and photograph that lady over there, that Cher. I said, darling, I know who Cher is. <laughs> because she was the right generation. <laughs> she was my generation. <laughs> um, I don't know, let's, let's pick someone at random. What was it like to uh, photograph Freddie Mercury? Uh, Freddie Mercury was very special to my life and very special to many, many people's lives. He was the most kindest and most gentlest person you could ever wish to, to have met or work with. I was very fortunate to be like a somewhat kind of in-house photographer for him for 11 years. Um, he was absolutely magnificent. Not just Freddie Mercury, the whole band, Queen itself, as a, as a, as a, as a unit, were fantastic. You know, they got, I got on really well with them. And I'd be on the road with them uh, on various occasions, and in Budapest, in Ireland, and and, and other pl other locations. And and if they knew that you were sitting in your dress in your dressing room, in your bedroom, and and it was like everybody's going out for dinner, I always got the call saying, "We're all in the lobby. Come and meet us. We're all going out for dinner." So. They, 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 they made you part of the situation. Yeah. And I was so thrilled and so proud um, to be part of uh, the, the Freddie Mercury and Queen situation for 11 years, um, up until the day he died, sadly. And, um, and you, must, you must have produced some absolutely extraordinary images um, which have passed into history. Uh, Richard, so, so good to have you here. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Congratulations on what's approaching 50 years, yeah, 50 of, years. Uh, photography. <laughs>